Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out new episodes of the show every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. If you missed an episode or want to get more information about the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Brian Bayliss, co-founder at Ascent. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. I think what you guys are doing is super important, but maybe before we kind of get into that, let's uh, get to know you a little bit better and kind of cover your background and where you grew up. Okay. So I grew up in a uh, in a suburb of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. I uh, grew up in a very middle-class family and uh, went to uh, uh, college at the Ohio State University, graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, okay, uh, an accounting degree. What, what and, made you want to take uh, that in university? My, um, my father had a public accounting firm. Okay, and uh, I, you know, thought it'd be much easier than trying to go get my own job, go work for my father. Okay, interesting. So I'm curious. Then, did you you graduated university? Did you go work for your father? Um, I went to work for my father um, back in 1981, uh, and we had a, a small, uh, small regional firm, and I practiced tax and IRS audit support. Okay, how how long did you do that for? Well, the firm ended up merging um, with a large regional firm, and I did that for about 12 years. Okay. Um, I had a very entrepreneurial flair, so I wanted to go out and do my own thing. Okay, so what made you decide to kind of eventually leave that world and, and do your own thing? Um, restrictions on what I could do and what I couldn't do. Um, so, you know, some people were telling me, you know, what clients I could take on, what I couldn't. And um, I was pretty full of myself at that point and full of a lot of ego and said, you know, I don't need you. I'll go do my own thing. Okay, interesting. So what did you end up starting? Uh, I started a consulting practice. Okay. And um, I, worked for, I worked for high net worth individuals. Okay. Um, and I did, you know, I did soup to nuts for them. I did everything. I was family office before the term was even vote. And uh, those individuals did a lot of private equity investments. Okay. And... So they would, you know, throw these really thick books at me and say, what did I get myself into? And so that's how I, um, how I learned the private equity business. Okay. So how did you land these kind of big name or wealthy kind of clients? Did you just through your they network were, or? They, no, they were clients of the, uh, they were clients of the firm. Okay. Um, but they were clients of my father's and friends of my father's for a long period of time. And I had um, actually... Um, with it was uh, three clients, and each of them I had uh, done something for them that they were very appreciative of, and they decided to to go forward with me. Okay, so okay, interesting. That makes that makes sense. So I'm kind of curious to know a little bit more what you guys or what you did exactly with these kind of clients. Like, obviously, you were helping with them their tax kind of stuff, tax, estate planning. Um, you know, if they needed to lease airplanes, uh, handle uh, their audit work, uh, work with their investment advisors. But I was pretty much the lead on their private equity, and I got very active into private equity as a result of those relationships. So I had my own deals. I worked on their deals and some of my own deals. Okay, so when you say your own deals, what does that, that exactly mean? You were... I was part of a, a, a number of startup companies, early oh. stage companies. Okay. And so how did you kind of decide to which companies to work with? Well, people would approach me with ideas. Okay. And um, if I saw an idea I liked, I would, you know, get involved. Okay. So and did you... that might be... Go ahead. Sorry. Might be helping them to raise capital, helping them to put their initial business plan together. Um, uh playing, you know, a C-level role, I, I, I've really, uh, you know, had a myriad of experiences. I mean, I've taken out the trash and I've also been CEO. 
and sometimes at the same time. Interesting. Okay. So based on kind of your background and whatnot, how long did you kind of run your own consulting firm? Well, I had run my own consulting firm till approximately two years ago. Okay. Okay. And, um, and what made you decide to kind of close it down and, and do your kind of go on to your next phase in life? Well, uh, I'm an alcoholic. Okay. And I had a, um, a very, very bad relapse. Okay. And uh, I was uh, put into the hospital in a partial hospitalization program. And um, I was not ready to go back to work. Okay. And based on my experience in treatment, I decided I wanted to change my career. Okay, interesting. I, I think like a, there's a lot of people kind of in the startup space that struggle with, um, well, any, or any space really that, that struggle with this. So, so you left treatment and then what did you end up doing? Well, um, I was in severe, severe depression. There were seven other people in that room. I basically couldn't get my head off the table. And uh, those seven other people were very different from me socioeconomically, but very much the same. And they helped breathe hope back into me. And what happened is, unfortunately, six of the seven of them relapsed within 90 days. Oh, wow. That's sad. And I thought there's, there's just got to be a better way. Sure. So I had a bunch of time on my hands. I did a whole heck of a lot of research. I talked to some of the foremost authorities in the country on recovery. Okay, wow. And what I learned is that the real, um, the real gap in treatment is continuing care. You know, how do you care for somebody post-treatment? Sure. And so as a result, um, I, you know, made a number of connections and um, put together a program that basically um, put together an e-recovery tool, an app, with live peer recovery support. Okay. And I decided that's what I want to do for a living. No, that makes a lot of sense. So how did you kind of go about um, co-founding this? Obviously, you found a co-founder? Yeah, so what what happened is, you know, I have a master's in mistakes. Okay, um, sure. <laughs> I have been doing this, if you do early stage for a long time, you know, I've had uh, some successes, but I've had some incredible failures. And one of the things that I realized early is what I'm good at and what I'm not. And, sure. uh, I think that's so super important, that, though. It, it, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I knew I shouldn't be the CEO of this company or the COO. And I also knew I didn't have the uh, clinical expertise to be able to put this together. So I was incredibly fortunate to get matched with a an organization that had almost all the expertise that we needed. Okay. And not only did they lend the expertise, but they also uh, put up the startup capital. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. It is awesome. Sure. Yeah. So, so tell me more about the company and exactly kind of what you guys do. So the name of the company is Ascent. Okay. And what um, we do is our mission is to uh, try to reduce the rates of relapse in this country, which are up to 90%, by the way, within wow. the first year. Wow. I didn't realize it was that high. It is. Yeah. It's off the charts. Wow. Um, and we have, you know, such a problem in this country now with heroin. Sure. Um, it's, it's, an, it's an epidemic. Sure. And it's not getting better fast. So what we're trying to do is to keep people connected. Sure. If you can keep people connected, they have a chance at recovery. When they isolate, they're, they're gone. Got you. And so where do people connect today? They connect through their cell phones. Sure. Um, Klein, Kleiner Perkins said that people look at their cell phones or smartphones up to 150 times a day. Sure. And so if we, and so our app keeps people connected. We basically ask them survey questions. If they're, in, if we see that there's a problem, we have a live coach that reaches out to them. Now, okay. not they reach out by virtually. Okay. So, for example, if, if I answer a daily survey with, you know a no answer when it should have been yes, my phone's going to ring. Interesting. Okay. So how so, does, okay, go ahead. Sorry. So, you know, we're really, really excited about what we're doing. The app that we decided to 
instead of building our own, we decided to license one that had documented outcomes. Okay. And having documented outcomes in this space is gold. Sure. And that's what we needed so that we can have the credibility to be able to um, to sell into the markets that we're looking to sell into. Sure. So I guess, like, what markets are you in then currently? We started in drug courts. Um, drug court is an alternative to incarceration. Okay. So if you have a nonviolent crime, uh, drug crime, they'll give you an opportunity to get treatment as opposed to being put in jail. Sure. And okay. It's a you know the the savings is huge. I mean, with the average cost of incarceration over thirty thousand dollars, if we can keep people out of jail, you know we're all better off for that. Sure. So drug courts is one treatment facilities. Um, we're in in discussions with correctional facilities. Okay. Um, we are um, we're talking to hospitals. Okay. Other healthcare organizations. I mean, there are you know a myriad of uses for for the tool. Sure, I I think that's that's really cool. So, and I think there's kind of a, a growing problem. Um, you know, most of my listeners are kind of entrepreneurial or kind of in the tech space and, and whatnot, and I would say, you know, there's kind of this up and coming kind of issue, even in like Silicon Valley and other parts of of the country, just in in tech companies where people are getting kind of addicted to certain things because they need to be always on, right? And, you know, they're working long hours, they're working, um, you know, and just it's it's almost insane how much some people are working and they turn to things and then they end up losing their job because it kind of destroys their life right and partly why this partly basically why i wanted to have you on the show because i think sometimes people don't feel comfortable necessarily going physically to meetings or places or 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 whatnot where you know with your tool they can almost do it a little bit more anonymously and kind of in the comfort of wherever they they want to be whether it's their apartment or house or or whatever that's absolutely correct so many people that have substance use disorder have social anxiety. Sure. They can't go to a meeting. They physically cannot get themselves to go to a meeting. And we understand that. In fact, many of them can't even talk on the telephone. So, you know, they have texting capabilities. Sure. Now, one of the capabilities of our uh, solution is that we have chats, peer-to-peer chats. Okay. So, you know, somebody wakes up at 3 o'clock in the morning, they're going to have somebody they can talk to. They can either talk to a peer recovery coach or they can actually talk to a peer. Okay. So, yes, your point is uh, extremely well paid. Yeah, no, I, I think that's that's super important. So I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper into kind of exactly, you know, how to use the app, kind of what features and services you guys offer. Just for the listener out there, you know, that, that are kind of, you know, maybe struggling with this, that uh, that are maybe a little bit more private about just wanting to be, get get help. So, you know, first of all, anybody can go to Ascent.org. Okay. And there is a demo in the store. Um, we not only are a, we a B2B play, but we just opened up our B2C. Right. And uh, so, you know, every consumer can, can buy the app if they'd like. Okay. And what does um, it and cost? There's a, a good video. Uh, the app is 30. It's, it's not the app. It's the it's really the Ascent solution. Okay. So the solution is 24-7, 365 pure recovery coaching. Yeah. And the e-recovery tool. And it's $35 a month. Okay. And we offer a 10-day free trial. Okay. Of the, uh, of the solution. Okay. So, you know, to, when you asked about the features of the app. Sure. Um, one, we do a daily survey. Okay. Um, we do weekly surveys. We um, try to engage people through chat. So, okay. you know, on a daily basis, we'll put out, you know, questions of the day. There is geofencing. So if the ABC bar is a trigger for me and I get within 100 yards of that, I'm going to get a message on my phone. Interesting. I'm also going to get a call from the peer recovery coach. Wow. In uh, early April, we're going to have medication adherence. Okay. Um, and then uh, appointment reminder. Okay. And we are also... Um, uh, implementing a wellness program. Um, we have a uh, an emergency feature. Okay. Um, and basically, if you hit that button, 
you can be on the phone in 10 seconds. Wow. With somebody. So 3 o'clock in the morning, I want to use. I'm sure. a heroin user. I'm going to use. I think, uh, you know what, I'll give myself at least a chance here. So I pick up that phone, and I'm on with somebody that can help me. And the people that you're going to be on the telephone with are people with lived experience. Our coaches have two years of sobriety. Okay. And they have over 50 hours of training. Wow. So, so who does know, that training? Train, we do. Okay. We, uh, we actually we retain somebody that had done a substantial amount of training for the state of Ohio. Okay. So now we use you know very standardized training programs. Sure. So so how does it work then? Um, basically, anybody in the nation can use the app, or is it kind of beyond that? Well. We actually have somebody out of South Africa that's interested, but we have some program issues we have to deal with. But okay. right now, let's say it's in the country. Okay. And we are talking to people from you know, all over the country at this point, and there's been a tremendous amount of interest. We're a very early stage company. Sure. Um, but we have uh, – I just uh, got back from a national conference out of Las Vegas, and we have tremendous interest. You know, one of the groups that are really interested are the payers. And so we're in, you know, in various uh, levels of discussion with some of the payers because the value proposition for the solution is incredible. I mean, if we can reduce rehospitalizations, emergency room visits, um, incarcerations, um, there, there's there's so much potential value here. And you know, the, I talked about the documented outcomes earlier of the uh, of the app. Um, there is an article in the Journal of American Medicine and Psychiatry from 2014 that documented a substantial reduction in hospitalizations, uh, rehospitalizations of chronically alcoholic veterans. Wow. And so th those reductions were actually approximately 70%. Well, now, that's, the, the, that's awesome. the qualifier with that, because everybody says, oh, my God, that's amazing, sure. which it is, is that um, something called medication-assisted treatment was involved with that as well. So we think the combination of, of Medicaid-assisted treatment, something like a methadone, okay. um, and the combination of our tool um, is going to dramatically uh, reduce the, the rates of relapse in this country. Sure. I, no, I, I think that's awesome what you're doing. I, I think, you know, it, it's a much-needed solution, and I love the fact that, you know, you're, you're building this. Uh, I also love the fact that you – kind of you've you've been through it yourself and I, I love the fact that you've also been involved kind of in the tech tech space before you know you've done a bunch of startups or, or worked with people that are that are doing this kind of stuff and and so I'm kind of curious to know um, any advice for people that are, are looking to um, kind of you know get out and leave their kind of comfy job or, or company and, and work on something that they're passionate about. Like, how did you kind of decide to go finally just kind of chase after this? I, I get that it was a personal reason, but was there one kind of deciding factor for you that just kind of said, okay, I need to, you know, go off and start my own company? You know, I'm primarily focused on the mission. Okay. I mean, I, I'm, you know, still friendly with four of the people in that partial hospitalization program. And I'm embarrassed to say before my experience, I probably would have never been friends with those people. Um, and they're, they're incredible people. So, you know, it's, it's primarily mission focused, but look, okay. at the end of the day, this is a for-profit organization. We need to make it that because no money, no mission. Sure. And so I took a really, really hard look at the industry and this is big business. Sure. The recovery industry is a $35 billion industry according wow. to Forbes. And, and, I certainly have seen that. Um, for most of the industry is focused on high-end treatment facilities, okay. but there is um, there's a real trend towards lower-cost outpatient because the payers are sick and tired of paying for people going in and out of rehabs at you know twenty five, thirty, fifty thousand dollars you know a stint. Sure. So I think that we have you know put ourselves in a position. Um, we have a very high address, uh, very high-end addressable market. Um, we have a huge demand, 23.5 million people with substance use disorder, and only 2.5 million received treatment in 2014. Oh, wow. So the demand is huge. And, you know, from 
if we're taking the mission away, which we're not, but if we are, from a business perspective, this makes a tremendous amount of sense. Sure. No, that's awesome. So you mentioned you kind of raised um, kind of a money to start up. Are you yeah. are you kind of still raising another round, or or kind of where are you at in kind of development? Yeah, we we are. Okay. Um, we're now um, raising funding to take us to the break even level. Gotcha. So we have proof of concept. We have real clients. Okay. Um, you know, and we'll continue to modify what we have, but what we have works. And, uh, and you know, it was really a tremendous amount of work to get here. Sure. Um, but, yes, we we have a uh, round that we um, have recently started. Okay. And as, um, we know there's another round beyond this. Okay. Um, to really take us to a, a completely different level. But, uh, but we're pretty excited about our prospects. And, you know, again, I don't count anything until it's done, but we have an extremely robust pipeline of, uh, of opportunities. Sure. So what platforms, just for the listener, are you on currently? When you say platform. Like um, Android, iOS, hmm? the web? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were talking about from a fundraising perspective. Oh, no, no, um, sorry. Uh, we are Android and iOS. Okay. Android and iPhone. Okay. Are you building a web version at some point, do you think? Um, right now, it's not in the plans because we believe to connect to people, we want to connect on their phones. Sure. That makes sense. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that there won't be, but again, we're not the developer. We are very, very close with the developer. We actually have contractual relationships with the developer. Gotcha. We are not the developer of the app. Right. Our value okay. is in the solution. Our value is in the solution. Okay. So, so let's talk about that relationship a little bit because that that's interesting to me. So, they have an app that you license, correct? Yes. Okay. So, do you get to talk about kind of additional features, or are you kind of a little bit tied to what they want to do, or is it a little bit of both? Um, we certainly talk to them about features and modifications and they have been, they're a tremendous partner. Okay. Um, they've done, you know, they have part, uh, done everything we've really asked. You know, we, um, um, you know, and, and we really like some of the things that are coming out in the future, which I haven't discussed at this point, um, which aren't for public knowledge, but sure. the, the app is going to be, you know, it's going to be really, really, it's even more dynamic than it is at this point. And we are, you know, convinced still, because I did a very extensive uh, study on what the best app was out there, that HS is the best app out there. Interesting. Okay, so what kind of, walk me through that process a little bit, because there's got to be a lot of people out there that, you know, want to do something that potentially were in, are in the same kind of boat that you're in, that, you know, they just want to maybe acquire some technology or license of technology. So can you maybe walk me through about how, how did you go about even, where did you even start? Um, where I started was I, I did a bunch of Google research okay. on what apps were out there. Sure. And then I did searches on the phones. And um, so we, we talked to a number of the um, app developers. Okay. And after this, you know, these extensive discussions, it was very clear to us that the uh, HS group is who we wanted to do business with. Sure. So we um, then we had a face-to-face meeting. Okay. Um, and uh, we had dinner with the CEO, and then the CEO came and presented to our entire staff. And we um, all really liked them, and we based it not only on the fact that they were a great app, but they were so passionate about the mission. Gotcha. And they, you know, it was, they were going to be successful. They were going to make a difference. And that really aligned with our values. Interesting. So, uh, so we, um, we then um, entered into uh, an arrangement with them. Okay. um, Which allowed us to, uh, to sell the app. And, uh, and that's, that's the relationship today. We, we talk, you know, multiple, multiple times a week, you know, several of our team members and their team members, you know, to continue to refine and, um, perfect, um, uh, well, not perfect because we'll never perfect it, but uh, certainly make the, uh, 
yet better and very, very scalable. I mean, we are built for a tremendous scale right now. Okay. No, that that's awesome. I, I think that's always interesting, right? Because like, like I just kind of mentioned, I think people don't really know where to start, right? And I, I, I love the fact that you basically right. just use Google, right? And you connected, right. you finally, you did some kind of your own research. Um, I'm, you obviously reached out to them, you know, they, you, you had a bunch of interaction, you ended up meeting in person. So they, are they right in Ohio as well then, or? They're not, they're out of uh, Buffalo, New York. Okay. So you had to fly there. They flew to you. Right. Uh, they came and met us. Okay. And, uh, we actually wanted to meet the developer of the app as well. Okay. Yeah. The original developer, the app was developed out of the University of Wisconsin. Okay. And the the uh, company that we're dealing with, they they are developing the app commercially. Gotcha. So the app was developed out of the University of Wisconsin with a um, a lot of support from the National Institute of Health. Interesting. They've done a tremendous job. They've been working on this for years and years and years. So we, you know, not only did we meet the the commercialization CEO, but we met the founder and developer of the app out of the University of Wisconsin. Very cool. That I, I love kind of stories like that where, you know, you never know when, once you like reach out to somebody kind of exactly where something came from. And it, it's pretty cool that it came out of a university because there's a lot of really good um, kind of software for, I guess, lack of a better term, coming out of universities across, you know, North America and the rest of the world. And I think the, the nice thing is, is sometimes, and I'm not saying all, all, all cases, but there's a lot of kind of good work and we're partnered even where I, where I work um, with a local university and we help fund some research and we're kind of working with them on, on actually commercializing some of the stuff that their students are doing. And I, I think there's a lot of really cool stuff and it's, it's cool to find somebody else that, you know, I, I guess you didn't really know when you first reached out potentially, but there's a lot of stuff happening at these universities that people either don't know how to commercialize, don't want to commercialize, but are, are willing to do it. You know, if somebody else kind of helps them and partners with that. Exactly. Exactly. No, so, you're, you're right. Yeah. And I think that's, that's interesting. So you, you met the developer. Um, is he or she still kind of involved in the project? Because I, I oh, guess. Oh, yes. They're very active. Okay. Very so. Active. Were they like a student at the university? No, they're a professor at the university. Okay, very cool. Okay, so, do, but does the professor have kind of their students working on the app as well, or like as they come through the years? Or yeah, there there are some graduate students that are working on it, but it's really his baby. Sure. Um, and uh, just a terrific person and very very well respected by. Uh, numerous governmental agencies. Sure. I, I think that's awesome. And I, I think like, it sounds like we're in kind of a similar situation where, um, you know, there was obviously graduate students and stuff working on the piece of software I just mentioned. But I think that's, uh -huh. that's awesome that you kind of have this new, you, you almost have like new people looking at it ev almost every semester, right? Or, or at least a couple times a year. And it's interesting when there's new people, like I get that you need somebody kind of the professor kind of keeping track of everything and, and kind of the vision, but it's nice to have kind of new people look at it a couple of times a year as well, right? Where they can kind of see new. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And, and obviously they're smart people um, if they've made it that far along in, in university and, and whatnot. And, and so you never know. And I think what I'm, the point I'm trying to get across here is there's a lot of cool stuff happening in universities across, you know, the nation and the world and that, it's it's a uh -huh. really good viable opportunity to partner with these um, institutions. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Yes, I agree. No, that's that's awesome. So without kind of, I know you kind of mentioned that you have a bunch of new features rolling out, and you mentioned a few. Is there any other thing that you want to mention that's kind of up and coming in the next few months that you kind of want to promote a little bit? Well, I, I think what I'd like to mention is that we're not, you know. Our focus right now is on addiction and recovery, but we're really going to focus long term on behavioral health. Okay. So it's, um, you know, the reason the name of the company used to be Sober First. Okay. We changed it to Ascent because the name Sober First was too limited. Gotcha. I mean, there are so many behavioral health issues, you know, mental health and 
um, and uh, addiction uh, issues that we really need to tackle. And there's a number of, you know, a number of uh, things that we're working on in the off thing, you know, to deal with those those issues. I mean, right now we have our hands full with um, trying to launch addiction and recovery, um, which is is terrific. Um, but you know, we have we have larger plans. Sure, I got you. So, any any story behind the name? Well, the um, the name, the initial name, sober first is that. Sobriety was your first priority. Sure. It was your first priority. But Nothing like good ascent. happens unless you're sober. Um, but the name Ascent, we were looking for something, you know, different that really uh, captured what we what we're trying to do. And you know, as people ascend, got you. They, they move up. Sure. And so that's that's was was behind the name. So we did. We actually did a branding process, and and that's what we came up with. Sure. No, I I think that's awesome. But Brian, we're kind of coming to the end of the show. So maybe for anybody that's kind of tuning in late, um, do you maybe want to give a kind of a quick overview of exactly what you're doing, what the tool is, and and then we'll sure. uh, we'll close out the show. Sure. The the Ascent Solution um, combines virtual peer recovery coaching with an e recovery tool, and the reason that we use the uh, the mobile phone is that that's where people are connected. So we want if we can keep people connected, we're gonna they're gonna have a chance at recovery. If they isolate, they don't. And so we're very you know excited about what we've created, the response to what we've created. You know we're definitely a disruptor. This sure. is very different. But what we fill is we're filling the gap um, in in treatment, and the gap in treatment is continuing care. So we are a solution to uh, enhance uh, other continuing care uh, treatment out there. No, I, I think that's awesome. So where can people find you guys online? And then if you want to mention any other social media or links. Sure. Um, Ascent.org um, is our website. Okay. And um, we have also been doing a number of podcasts, um, Sober Guy, uh, Sober Nation, um, you know, many of the recovery uh, podcasts. So, you know, we're creating a, a, a fairly good awareness of, uh, of our solution. And I'm happy to, uh, you know, to speak to anybody who can contact me through the website. Perfect. Well, um, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your, your day to do this. I look forward to kind of uh, following your guys' mission and uh, watching your continued success. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, man. Well, uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. 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 Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check them out at electricmantra.com and keep them in the future.